Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout and be entered into the month-long giveaways, culminating into a Black Lotus and 1st edition Charizard. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a red-white aggro deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring the full playset of Angel Fire Ignition from Midnight Hunt, the 3 mana sorcery putting 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on target creature. It also gains Vigilance, Trample, Lifelink, Indestructible and Haste until end of turn, and we can even flash it back out of the graveyard for 4 mana. So very powerful effect, especially when combined with a double strike from our Blade Historian, giving attacking creatures we control double strike, 4 mana 2-3, so that way we get to build our own Ember Cleave essentially, and that's a great way for us to close out our games. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck, at 1 mana we've got Usher of the Fallen as a nice 2-powered creature, can also boast making 1-1 one -one tokens, and then Fireblade Charger doesn't have any equipment to go with it, even though you could potentially play them all of the Skyclaves, but when the Charger dies it deals damage equal to its power to any target, so if we can increase its power somehow it can turn into a very deadly piñata, and we can not only increase its power with Angel Fire Ignition, but also with our Luminarch Aspirant at 2 mana, the 1-1 one -one creature saying at the beginning of combat put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature you control, so very powerful 2-drop in its own right, but also synergizes well with our Charger. And same goes with the Intrepid Adversary, 2 mana 3 1 Lifelinker from Midnight Hunt. And as it enters the battlefield, we can pay 1 and a white any number of times. And then it enters with that many Valor counters on it. And our creatures all get plus 1 plus 1 for each Valor counter on the Adversary. So it's a totally serviceable 2 drop, but it can also turn into a very powerful mana sink in the late game. And then we've got two copies of Cargon Intimidator, a 3-1 human warrior saying cowards cannot block warriors, so besides being effective against changelings, we can also use the ability to turn one of our opponent's creatures into a coward, we can also give the Intimidator plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn, or we can give a warrior trample until end of turn, and besides the Intimidator we've got a few other warriors like the Charger and the Usher of the Fallen. Then at 3 mana we've got the full playset of Elite Spellbinder, as just a very effective 3-drop, a 3-1 flyer, that when it enters lets us look at the opponent's hand, and exile a non-land card from it that they have to pay 2 generic mana in addition to its cost to cast, so great for disrupting any sweepers that the opponent might have, or just to throw off the opponent's curve. And then also gives us an evasive threat that we can start pumping up, and maybe give double strike with our Blade Historian. And then we've got Reckless Stormseeker, the 3 mana 2 3 human werewolf from Midnight Hunt, saying at the beginning of combat on your turn, target which we control gets plus 1 plus 0 and gains haste until end of turn. That's the daybound side. And then as it turns to night, it turns into a storm charged slasher, a 3 4 werewolf, saying at the beginning of combat, target which we control gets plus 2 plus 0 and both trample and haste until end of turn. So incredibly powerful, essentially attacks as a 3 3 with a Stormseeker, and if it ever turns to nighttime, then that's plus 2 plus 0. Trample also plays very well with our double strike from Blade Historian. And then finally we've got two copies of Showdown of the Skulls, providing extra card advantage and staying power by exiling the top four cards of our library, and until the end of our next turn we can play those cards, and then on the second and third chapters, whenever we cast a spell this turn, we can put a plus one plus one counter on target which we control, so potentially another way to increase the power on Fireblade Charger. And then the mana base also includes two copies of Den of the Bugbear, as an extra creature land that can pressure the opponent, great against control decks, and then a nine basic planes, seven basic mountains, two snarls, and the full playset of the red-white pathway. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. A good 1-2-3 curve. Being on the play also important with a deck like this that's pretty bad when it has to play defense, but uh, if it gets off to a quick start and gets to curve out, it's going to be very hard to beat unless the opponent's packing lots of removal, maybe some sweepers. So let's see what the opponent is up to. Might be a mono green deck, which is a pretty tough matchup, but luckily we're on the play, so that makes a huge difference. The creatures in the mono green deck are usually just large enough to make it difficult for us to attack. And then definitely give Stormseeker haste. Could put counter on the Aspirant itself to trade for Sculptor of Winter. 
Although long-term aspirant is quite useful, so I think it's still counter on Usher. Then I don't have double white, so I might not be able to pump the team with adversary. But second aspirant still going to be great here. Alright, opponent's got a pack leader. Into maybe a blizzard brawl, could kill Stormseeker. Alright, it's going to be a double pack leader turn instead. Still quite good. So, play another aspirant. And then... Where to put the plus one counters is a question. I probably want a plus one counter on Stormseeker, so they at least have to double block it and lose a pack leader. And then I probably want the other plus one counter on Usher, although then they're definitely going to double block Stormseeker. I think I'm going to go plus one on Aspirants, counter on Stormseeker, counter on Aspirants. And then send in everyone. That way they're not gonna get away with double blocking Stormseeker as easily, because then I get to get in with Aspirant. And a single block on Usher means the Stormseeker survives. So they're probably just gonna trade for Aspirant and Usher, but that's fine by me. The opponent getting to untap with double pack leader could be quite dangerous because then they can potentially run away with the game. Especially if they have a couple removal spells. So your opponent just takes a trade for Usher, so it feels like we got a nice attack in there. Still have my double aspirant, which could eventually take over the game. And at four life, our opponent's definitely on the back foot. Can even activate my Den of the Bugbear next turn, which is probably better than playing Adversary if I can't pump the team. Three cards in hand, something like a Seekus Chariot could stabilize them. And that's where we need our Flying Creature, Elite Spellbinder, or the Trample, or Double Strike. But having the opponent in this position at least gives us a chance. If our opponents started with turn 2 pack leader, turn 3 pack leader, we would have had a very hard time attacking. We would have been probably on the back foot, forced to trade while the opponent gets to draw cards with pack leader. So, definitely a play draw dependent matchup. Our opponent does have the Blizzard Brawl, takes out Stormseeker, which is why they didn't want to necessarily trade away all the pack leaders. And then we'll see if they get in an attack. They do. So maybe they're hoping to draw another removal spell, or they've got some more blockers they can follow up with. But Den of the Bugbear represents a lot more damage here. Just a Ranger class. There's a Spellbinder I was talking about. But it feels like just going for Den of the Bugbear activation should be game. So counter on Aspirants, and then doesn't matter too much where I put the other counter. Even a Snakeskin Veil is not going to change the outcome here. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with the fine hands. Turn one charger, turn two intimidator, turn three ignition, turn four ignition perhaps. So we've got our first four turns covered. And ideally the opponent doesn't have too much removal in hand. Because that's one way to beat angel fire ignition. Now I most likely play Elite Spellbinder first. It's going to be a Fading Hope to Bounce Intimidator. Also would have been effective against our Ignition, so... 
Fine exchange. Put on blue whites. So not exactly sure what they're up to. So here, if we want to play around Jory Disruption, we don't play Spellbinder, but I have another one. So that's probably okay. Alright, it's just a Spectral Adversary instead, so some sort of flash deck. And we see Fading Hope, Warhound, Adversary. Don't care too much about uh, defense, is the Adversary any special creature type, just Spirit. So... Yeah, making a 1 mana spell too more expensive is not incredibly impactful, so maybe go for the Adversary here, or I could take the Warhound so they can get the extra land off of it. Which is also reasonable. Otherwise they could have played Warhound now. Gotten an extra planes and then still had Pathway to represent Fading Hope and Defense. Do have to kind of play around that Fading Hope now. So, not going to play Ignition anytime soon. Right, it's just going to be a 3-1 Adversary, which we can hold off with a Fireblade Charger. So, yeah, probably just another Spellbinder plus Usher. Going to go for the Fading Hope. Ooh, Legion Angel, I guess I want to take instead. That could have been a problem. And then I'll hit for three. We'll see if they want to bounce. And that's okay. Opponent did keep the card on top. But yeah, they don't have a ton of great options available. It's going to be a Warhound just as a 3-1. And now that the Fading Hope is gone, we can go for the Angel Fire Ignition. And could even put it on the Fireblade Charger. Not that it's really necessary. Could put it on Elite Spellbinder so it can attack past Adversary. Yeah, don't mind that. And then now with the two counters it will keep attacking past Adversary while also blocking this turn thanks to Vigilance. And then next turn we can deploy some other creatures. So next turn they can maybe play Legion Angel, Warhound attacks, I'll trade Charger for two creatures here. Seems good. Showdown's great too. So no bad options really. Tank with the team. Fine with the trade. And then we'll add Spellbinder and Intimidator to the board. And that leaves my opponent dead even if they cast Legion Angel. So yeah, the information gained from Spellbinder also very relevant in this matchup. We'll move to combats. And a Fateful Absence, so I could pump the Intimidator. Gives us 7 damage, still not quite enough. But our opponent packs it in. Alright, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, fine hand. Turn one, probably go with Usher still. And a turn two Ranger class we can attack into. 
and play Intimidator. Bottom goes for the trade. Pretty happy with that. Is your opponent also mono green? The Flora Hedron now into Blizzard Brawl with three snow lands, so takes out Intimidator. Luckily, we can get it back on the board with Stormseeker, which feels better than Spellbinder, even though, hmm, as I say that, yeah, I should probably disrupt their curve. Don't want to be facing a Renan 7 here. Opponent's got a few heavy hitters, Froghemoth, Gnarled Professor. By taking Froghemoth, we just make it less likely that the opponent's ever going to cast it, as opposed to Professor is still totally fine at 6 mana. Opponent gets to learn for Introduction to Annihilation. Alright, Blade Historian's looking good. If I go Charger plus Stormseeker, I don't really have any good attacks on the ground. Whereas now I get to hit for 6, and maybe next turn we get to make our DIY Ember Cleave. Could even give Charger haste with the Ignition. So opponent one mana short of Annihilation, just gonna level up Ranger class and attack. And then another Ranger class second main. Alright, feels like we have a lot of great options available. And I'm kind of liking Charger Ignition the most. Spread out our wealth a little bit. Sure, if they exile the Charger, it doesn't deal any damage, but it's also the least important creature in play at the moment, so... And that also leaves the Charger on defense as a great blocker. Opponent chumps. Still taking 12 here. They were forced to chump. And then another Blizzard Brawl of the top, pretty strong. Kills Blade Historian. And another Professor, but yeah, the Spellbinder is still lethal here. Alright, so good to see a little bit of Angel Fire Ignition in action. Also could have blocked with Charger and finished him off with it, but that's game. Also could have flashed it back here, so we still had a lot of plays to make. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Aspirant into Stormseeker, and hooray, we're not up against the green deck. Looks like a mono white aggro deck. So we can eventually go over the top with Ignition, at least that's the plan. Hopefully, the opponent doesn't have too much in the way of removal. For now, Stormseeker. Give itself haste, Aspirant gets the plus one counter. Alright, Skanclave unfortunately takes out Aspirant. But now they're less likely to have an answer to the creature I put the ignition on. And double aspirant, also great draw. So I can give one aspirant haste, as well as two plus one counters. Because the Stormseeker already had a profitable attack. And next turn ignition could very well be lethal. Another Apparition is going to exile the Aspirant. So they had the answers they needed. And now it stays back. But Showdown is also looking good, and then I can take a slightly slower approach. I could still go for Ignition, since it also makes my creature indestructible. But then they would probably just take five, and then if they have a third removal spell, it's pretty bad for me. Whereas now we can kind of play the long game with Showdown. And 
and then probably fine to play the usher now. Could put a plus one counter on it and give it haste, attack with it. Yeah, I guess that's fine. If they trade for apparition, we get a 2-2 two -two token in return. And then next turn I'll have to decide how to play the adversaries. Clarion Spirit can help the opponent go wide. So that's where the trample from Ignition is going to be important too. Alright, so... I don't think I can make a creature large enough to set up a crazy good attack. Even though I get the counters from Showdown. So this might be a case of play adversary and then play the other adversary with kicker and then maybe start boosting the illusion token so they can't exile it with another apparition and then I'll decline on this one pay for the other one Could also go with a line where I give the adversary a plus one counter, but then they could just trade for the Warhound still. So I think we just go all in on the illusion for now. And then I'm okay if it uh, trades for a bunch of creatures, but they might just chump. Alright, so now that we're stacking up a lot of power on one creature, the ignition also gets better. Spellbinder could mess with our plan a little bit, but can still play Ignition for 5 mana. That's alright. But now they know about it. So I guess worst case scenario is they have the uh, 2 mana removal spell. And our opponent did pass with two mana available, so going for Ignition is somewhat sketchy. So I could instead play Usher and Stormseeker and diversify a little bit more. And then they might pull the trigger on the removal spell anyway, before we play Ignition. And then where to put the plus one counters is a question. Probably want to put one more counter on the Illusion and then start diversifying. They didn't seem to hold priority there, so I don't think they have the removal spell, but I can still respect it. And then the author counter could go on maybe one of the adversaries. And then this is the Aspirant trigger. I want to get Adversary above 3 Toughness so it doesn't trade for Warhound. And then I guess I could give the Illusion haste and plus 1 power. And then I'm still just attacking with the Illusion I think or I could send an Adversary as well. Yeah, something like this is probably okay. Opponent is just chomping, falls to two. And I'm pretty sure we can get there with the ignition next turn. Another aspirant. They haven't leveled up their Paladin class yet. A Guardian of Faith of all things. Alright, and our opponent packs it in, so they needed a third removal spell, but they didn't have one. And Ignition was going to get there, even though we didn't actually cast it onto the next one. 
All right, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Turn to adversary into either Stormseeker or Spellbinder. And then Blade Historian is going to be a nice turn four play. Up against another mono green deck from the looks of it. I'll play the Spellbinder over Stormseeker since this would still trade for Pack Leader, which is not necessarily a great trade for us. And see what we're working with. Alright, so Blizzard Brawl is scary. Another Pack Leader and Chariot. Chariot is probably the pick. At least next turn they won't be able to play Pack Leader plus Blizzard Brawl. So they'll have to choose. And Chariot on 4. It's pretty difficult to get past for a creature deck. Although luckily we do have a Spellbinder to fly over. And our opponent currently on two snow permanents for Blizzard Brawl. So not quite enough to kill Spellbinder unless, of course, uh, they play the rune to pump up Pack Leader first. So we'll probably see a second main Brawl. Actually killing the adversary because they are going to have a hard time racing. But long term, I think I prefer having the Spellbinder in play. Alright, so now Blade Historian's looking good. More mana efficient play than anything else. And next turn, especially if we draw lands, it's going to be great, but Stormseeker is still very good by itself. Sadly, second Blizzard Brawl. Definitely one of the best cards in the matchup for the green deck and a ranger class. Okay. Sadly, land comes into play tapped, so we're looking at probably Hasty Stormseeker. Attack for 6. And try to keep up the pressure. Opponent jumps. I'd like to see that. So still one mana away from playing Chariot, a Frog Hemoth. It's gonna gain them some life back and potentially swing the race back in their favor. But uh, they also have to watch out for the Den of the Bugbear here. Opponent's at 8. And yeah, Den is just lethal. Aspirants also would have done it in combination with the Stormseeker. So we had lethal in a few different ways. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Hopefully pick up something we can do turn two, turn three. Can always play adversary if needed and boast usher. And then hopefully we won't be on the back foot by the time we play Blade Historian. I'll play my Snarl next turn. Opponent on a life gain deck with Cleric class. Okay. So I could go for the Ignition next turn. Depending on what the opponent plays, like a Righteous Valkyrie. Alright, now probably Stormseeker, pump up Adversary, which the opponent's not going to want to trade for. And then, yeah, we've got the combo rolled up here. Blade Historian for Double Strike. Ignition for Trample. Yeah, I would have been surprised if the opponent traded, since Valkyrie is such a key card in their deck. So they appear to be Mono Whites. And Icing Death to play. Okay. So time for Blade Historian. And then where to pump with Stormseeker? Probably Stormseeker itself. Because I'm not planning to attack with Blade Historian, am I? 
Um, I guess bumping Blade Historian would have still been okay. Because, like, if they block with Icing Death, we kill it for free. And Valkyrie only has two power, so that's not enough to kill it. And then I could have attacked with everyone. Opponent maybe trades Valkyrie for Adversary, Icing Death for Stormseeker. And I guess that leaves us with a low creature count to leverage the double strike. But yeah, then next turn Ignition would still be quite powerful. So, interesting spot here. Let me know in the comments what you would have pumped onto the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Got a 1-2, sort of 3, 4 curve. So it's going to be a turn to Luminar Aspirin, most likely. Alright, another mono green deck. Better get used to it. I think I still like Aspirants over Adversary, but it's close. Because if we draw another play we can make next turn, then I could save Adversary to play with Kicker. And this allows me to get in. Happy to see a trade. Might mean they have a troll on three. No, just a tap lands and a liberator. That's fine. Alright, I guess uh, I'll play adversary without any additional help. And then I think I'll go with counter on adversary. As we see a Seacast Chariot and an attack for two. Time for Historian. And I'll keep pumping the Adversary here, and then Historian can block a Cat Token at least. And that's going to make it difficult for the opponent to race. Now if they jump with a Cat Token, I'm only getting 5 life instead of 10, because of the way Double Strike and Lifelink works. Opponent takes the full hit. So they can crew the Chariots and send in just the Chariots. We want to get to a point where we can start attacking with the entire team and not just Adversary, otherwise the Chariot is going to be able to keep up with the uh, Cat Tokens. Opponent cracks a clue. That's fine. Ooh, Angel Fire Ignition. Now that might be the finishing blow we need. So our opponent has how much toughness? Eight. So I can make this 7, 8, double strike, so that hits for 16. Uh, so, yeah, I think if we attack with all, that leaves my opponent dead. And our opponent scoops it up. Sweet, so the Angel Fire Ignition, very important for breaking the board stall. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Just need land number three. Turn one Star Pupil, so plus one counter synergy deck. And uh, yeah, fine trading the Usher here. Turn 3 Spellbinder. As we see Katilda, alright, so it's more of a human stack instead. So they can generate quite a bit of mana already. Let's attack first and then Spellbinder.
Okay, they've got their own Spellbinder, Cathar, Aspirants. Think I take their Spellbinder. Don't want them slowing down my curve. Opponent does get to double spell thanks to Catilda. Stormseeker is nice. So, a couple options available. Including playing another Spellbinder, which is probably what I'm going to do. Now they can still cast those Exalt cards thanks to the extra mana. But at least they won't be able to play too many of them in the same turn. We're doing a lot of damage in the air, and then we've got Ignition to deal the last points, hopefully. Opponent's gonna go with Spellbinder first, probably takes the Ignition. So that's gonna be a 5 mana play now. Crank and Clue main phase leaves them with only 2 blockers. And now I could play Adversary to pump the team. Still doesn't really set up any attacks on the ground. Spellbinders would be trading, next turn they can exile the other one. So that doesn't sound amazing. So what's the play then? Stormseeker. Still no attacks. So at that point I think the more mana efficient play is just Adversary. And then no attacks. And then wait until we can ignition one of the spellbinders. Or maybe get an extra way to pump up our team or give it double strike. Blade Historian of the top, of course, would be amazing. Another spellbinder takes Stormseeker, so they managed to return the favor. So, yeah, now we're behind on board. Opponent takes Adversary, allowing the Spellbinders to trade, but uh, yeah, just takes uh, Blade Historian off the top to swing this game around. Fireblade Charger, not quite. So, not incentivized to trade, even though Catilda means they can leverage their humans to make extra mana. Ooh, their own adversary, that's probably going to be game over here. As the opponent can spend a ton of mana pumping it up. Alright, they're going for four activations, so the spellbinders are large enough to deal with ours. This is probably our last chance to make any meaningful attack. Another Angel Fire Ignition. Yeah, I can Ignition on one of the Spellbinders, which can make a good attack. But uh, I think we still die on the way back here. So we get to gain 5. And another adversary. Alright, that was a good draw. Although this time they're probably just gonna attack instead of tapping out. Yeah, that's the power of humans. When they have an uncontested Catilda, sadly our deck just doesn't play any removal. So we're at 28. Opponents also gaining 9 life. So this could chump and still taking a boatload of damage. 16 plus 18 
Yeah, that's more than enough here. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and uh, yeah, the sand seems fine. We've got the Charger plus Aspirant combo. Facing Cave of the Frost Dragon, Blue Whites, with an Aspirant as well. Next turn we get to Spellbinder, setting up our Blade Historian. Raidan, luckily no Snowlands in this deck. Play Pathway in case we draw a Snarl. And we see Brutal Cathar and another Raidan, which they could play as a shield as well but still gonna choose a Brutal Cathar. And hit for three. So we'll see if they decide to play Shield. They do. And a 3-4 Redan. Which is not going to be easy to attack into necessarily, even with double strike. But uh, yeah, we still trade for Redan, even with a double striking spellbinder. So I'm probably better off pumping the charger once again, although then I guess the Cathar exiles it without dealing any additional damage. I think we still pump Charger, because if they exile Charger, at least they're not exiling the Blade Historian. So the trade happens. Opponent's down to 9. And then we'll have to rebuild and maybe go wide with a couple Ushers and eventually Intrepid Adversary. Ooh, Angel Fire Ignition's great. So I could play Usher and then give it haste with the Ignition. And that should set up a good attack. And our opponent concedes. Amber Cleave is too strong. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Fine hands. Got that one, two, three curve. And lots of ways to grow the Fireblade Charger. It's going to be a Lair of the Hydra into Sentinel. So I'll play this as a white source since I need double white for adversary. Keep basic in hand for Snarl. Pump Charger hit for two. Sir opponent Mono Green with a pack leader. And they might be keeping up Snakeskin Veil, which could give their creature plus one plus one. And then if it has Axe Proof, I also can finish it off with the Fireblade Charger. But I can pump it with a Storm Seeker as well. So that's probably the play here, as opposed to attacking with a hasty Stormseeker, which is not particularly exciting. If her opponent wasn't representing anything, I guess putting the counter on Stormseeker as well as giving it haste would have been reasonable. Kill Sentinel which could no longer tap for mana to cast Snakeskin Veil, so possible they didn't have it or 
just didn't think of floating the mana. Ooh, Blade Historian. Now that's exciting. So, Hasty Blade Historian. Could also wait and set up with Aspirant and Adversary first. To maybe bait out a Blizzard Brawl. How would that look like? Nah, I think we still go for it. And this can gain haste, put count from Aspirant itself. And everyone can attack. They could trade Tracker for any one of my non-Historian creatures. But it also makes it more difficult for them to Blizzard Brawl to remove one of my creatures. They're down to eight. So I like my chances. Field of Ruin, no Den of the Bugbear to take out. And a Ranger class. Alright, looks like they do have a fight spell, but no third Snowland, so Blizzard Brawl can't kill Historian. So they're just gonna level up. And they're in trouble here. So do I have guaranteed lethal with a pumped adversary? I believe I do. Pump the team, attack with all. They have to chump adversary and still take 12 damage. Sweet. So faced many a mono green deck today and somehow got away with all wins. Although in practice I definitely lost a couple matchups, especially when on the draw. If the mono green deck draws multiple copies of Blizzard Brawl, it's pretty tough, especially since our deck doesn't really play defense well. We have to be turning our creatures sideways. As soon as we're forced into a defensive stance, it's basically game over. So that's where the double strike from Blade Historian comes in handy, as well as Angel Fire Ignition, allowing us to win close racing situations. Could also go with a slightly more controlling build, where we maybe max out on Showdown of the Skulls, and then play lots of cheap removal spells as well. But then our creature synergies from Blade Historian and Angel Fire Ignition become a lot weaker, so then the deck looks a lot different. But for now, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.